Hi, I'm Sarah Arthanagara, Pilates educator and longtime Pilates instructor for over 20 years. I teach both in colleges as well as at studios. And today I would like to share with you one of my favorite props, although I have many. <laughs> um, this one is called rotator disc. And this one as well as this one, they're both sold and uh, made by Balanced Body. You can get them at Pilates.com. And you can also grab a discount for them through my website if you use my affiliate link. And that would be found at BaliBodyPilates.com. And then just click on the shop button and then there's a link to get to Pilates.com <laughs> and get a 5% discount. All right, so that said, I'll show you a little bit, um, just a quick little demo here on one of uh, my favorite ways to use rotator disc, especially as I am teaching new clients. Now, little caveat, I'm not teaching this exercise to you, <laughs> all right? This is like an introduction to um, some exercises that I teach to my clients when I'm seeing people in person in my classes and or via Zoom sometimes, all right? So please do not practice this exercise um, as though this video is a tutorial. Uh, this is just to expose you to some great information, informational video, and then should you like to dive into the work yourself, I recommend that you hire a Pilates instructor, or show up to a class and ask them if they can incorporate the rotator disc into your program. So that's it. This wooden disc is the first one that I'll be using and it has ball bearings in it. It's a little bit loud when I move it, so you can hear it when I go like this. All right, kind of sounds like a musical instrument, like maraca or something. All right, and then this is something that I made out of an old yoga mat. It's just a cutout circle. And it is the same size as the rotator disc because the rotator disc is made of wood. It's not super comfortable necessarily. Um, in the particular movement and or exercise that I'm going to be demonstrating today. So that's an option if you want a little craft project <laughs> to do. All right, then this one um, is another rotator disc. It's made of plastic and inside uh, there's rubber bands and the rubber bands then create resistance. So this one is a little quieter and when you turn it, you'll feel that kind of elastic band, rubber band or their band feel, okay? And so today I'll be showing you a quick little demo of a movement of the pelvis that is called a couple of things. Um, sometimes we call it lateral rotation. It's like driving a steering wheel, yeah? Or a lateral tilt of the pelvis. So getting to come up to a kneeling position to show you this as well. If I'm kneeling, then to make a lateral rotation happen in the pelvis, I have to lift one knee off the floor and then the, that hip, hip <laughs> that that leg is attached to, yeah, will hike. All right, if I am doing that standing, then I can also do the same movement here by lifting the foot off the floor. If I soften up the knees, crack crack and then I have a little bit of wiggle room and I can start doing a little salsa dancing right so understanding this lateral movement or lateral rotation of the pelvis uh, has great implications both to help teach you how to be a better dancer but also uh, it's a natural movement that we do all of the time it's a position as well that we get ourselves into for instance in our Z fit, when we practice the mermaid exercise, we'll be in a little bit of a pelvic tilt there. All right, might sit in your favorite easy chair and have that favorite armrest side, and you might be sitting with one hip hiked up, and we call this a left lateral rotation with that left hip on the lower side. All right, so it's lots of different words to explain the same thing, <laughs> um, but simply, it's a hip hike, yeah, on one side. 
and a lengthening of the waistline on the other side to put it in maybe more layman's terms. And it's very common for us humans in our bodies to favor one side over the other. So when I am working with clients for the first time, I almost always give them this exercise to try and then I look and try to identify and see if there's a bias to one direction or the other. So this is what I have people do is lying down on their back. Whenever I have people go into bridging, I make sure the eyes are on the ceiling and again that we're a little warmed up in those hamstrings ideally. The calves and hamstrings don't cramp. So I'm placing the disc, the wooden one, right underneath the center of my pelvis. Once my pelvis is there, my pelvis is pretty low to the ground, my rib cage is on the mat. So then once I'm on it, I can freely move my head from side to side. All right? It's just that transition time that I want to make sure that I'm not moving my head around so I don't tweak my neck. So once my pelvis is on here, all right, these pokey hip bones at the top, sometimes we call those our ASIS bones. You may or may not be able to feel them on your body, okay, depending on how exposed they are to the surface of the body, but then place your fingers there or near there, and then place your thumbs up on the rib cage, okay, and I'm saying your, this is how I would speak to a client of mine, again, I'm not teaching you, but um, for demo purposes, right? I'd have fingertips on the hip bones, thumbs up on the rib cage, and then we're just gonna kind of glide along in the direction that the disc wants to take us. And my fingers on one side will get closer together, my fingers and thumb, and longer or farther away from one another on the other side. Sometimes I like to imagine that between my fingers are, uh, <laughs> what is it that I imagine? Um, suspenders. So one suspender is getting shorter, one suspender is getting longer. And then I might notice that, mm, yeah, I love to hike my left hip. That's my favorite side. And so I might give a little extra oomph in the other direction to both get the right side of my torso revved up or woken up or even strengthening it more and stretching out the left side a bit more. Right. It is ideal for the body to be both strong and flexible in both directions equally. So then we can add in the resistance disc to help us get a bit stronger as well. So I'm going to bring my head back to alignment, take the hips up, move the disc out, take the other disc. If I wanted, I could place the yoga mat on there too. But sometimes I do with this one, it's a little slimmer. The um, hard plastic is, I don't know, feels a little more comfortable than the wood. So for my body, so I'm going to use it just main. All right. And then with that resistance disc, immediately if I go in either direction, I'm going to start having a little resistance to press against. Now these discs come in a couple of different resistance levels. There's actually one of uh, the plastic discs that doesn't have any resistance at all. And then it comes in both a light and a heavy resistance and also different sizes. So this is the smallest size and this so is the lighter um, resistance. But I do like the heavy resistance for working with the pelvis. You can use these discs for many different exercises. This is just one little example. Now, because my pelvis likes to hike on the left side, if I lift my hips up and then I do a little rotation up in the air here and get the left hip to hike before I set the pelvis down, so I've shortened the left suspender, lengthened the right suspender. Now, immediately when I start to rotate, I'm going to start getting more resistance, which means my right waistline is going to work harder. And once I max out, if I relax, the rubber bands are just going to spin me back to that left hip hike, right? But really to gain more strength, I've gotten to control the pelvis back to that left hip hike, which again, we might call left pelvic upslip or a right lateral rotation, a right lateral tilt. Yeah. 
We're just hiking that left hip up. All right. So, ah, so it's definitely a good one for me. <laughs> it's a good one for a lot of us. Again, when we want to come out of it, we're practicing that exercise. We want to make sure that we come up with the head in alignment, take the disc out, place it aside, and voila. There you go. All right. I hope that was short enough. <laughs> and then we can apply that understanding in our bodies to a lot of our Pilates exercises. Um, for instance, when we're doing single leg circles, a lot of the time when we swing that leg around out to the and up to the side, we'll accidentally hike the hip as the leg comes up instead of just swinging the leg bone around. So here, yeah. okay. Here's an example of that. Here's the pelvis, right? And we come around. Ideally, the pelvis stays stable, completely stable, and the leg just moves, where are we, <laughs> in the hip socket. But a lot of times as students come around and up, then they accidentally start laterally tilting the pelvis. So once that leg is back up there, yeah, it might re-identify, hmm, where's my pelvis, and correct the pelvis so that we're really isolating the movement just into the hip joint. All right. So uh, if you would like to learn more from me, please subscribe. <laughs> and I look forward to sharing more with you. And if you have questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below here on my YouTube channel. Or if you're not watching this on my YouTube channel, you can head over there and drop them in and request any videos that you might like me to make as well. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful.